Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Doug. Nice to have Hi. you here. Hi. For those of you who are first Hello. time here, my name is Don Gennetti. I run an online uh, photography school called um, <clears throat> Project 52 uh, for commercial photographers. And what you're doing here is a sample of some of the types of uh, classes that we run. And uh, let's get, if you have questions and things, please don't hesitate to just tag me on here and uh, we'll get back to you pretty quick. We have uh, some great classes. There's eight classes here, really awesome classes. I'm so glad to have so many of you aboard here. I get to meet some new faces. <laughs> awesome. All right, here's how we do it. We are recording, so, uh, if you have to bail early or if I'm going to critique every image, if you have to bail early, it'll be there on the video at YouTube. If you have to miss or something, that'll be fine. Uh, and I will also uh, share with you something here in a moment as we have a summer break coming up. Here we go over to the photos and the albums. Now, kind of new to using Facebook. The first time we used Facebook for this type of thing was the last time we ran this. Actually works pretty well. The only problem is I can't see the name of the photographer before I click on it. So uh, be watching the mouse. Uh, you'll notice that uh, there's no class on August 8th. On August 8th, I will be hopefully in the middle, uh, well, right on the border between Wyoming and, and uh, um, some other damn state, uh, Montana, I think it is. Wyoming and Montana, a place called Beartooth Pass. Beartooth Pass um, on my birthday. It's my birthday. I'm going to ride my motorcycle up to Montana and back. So won't be here that week. Here we go. First image up is, is this one, Sophie. Um, Sophie, if you're here, pop in and say hi, and we'll look at this. Um, okay, we're seeing, we're seeing, Sophie, this is a little bit different for you. I'm seeing a lot of texture here, not so much texture in here. We can see the high points, I probably would bring that out. What I'm missing on these guys is a highlight. And you've got a little bit of a highlight right there. I bet we could bring it out. Sophie, you here yet? These highlights. Well, you need to share your screen. I'm not sharing the screen. No, no, it's it shared. I can okay. see his. I can oh. see the screen frame. I see I it. it. I see it. <laughs> okay, see sorry. It. I'm obviously doing something wrong. Let me check my. It's a I'm technical doing. problem. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the highlights that we've got. That Sophie has here in the shiny parts. I would increase those highlights just by a little dodging, um, Sophie. Whether you you do a regular a regular dodging or um, of the non-destructive one uh, and this one. We do have a little bit more texture over here and we got the highlight here to show this bit of texture in here and the wood behind it. I think, Sophie, I would do something to this wood, maybe give it a little bit of a, um, yeah, a, a gradient little darker in the back, maybe a little darker. It's, the wood is so flat, it doesn't flatter your, your um, whatever this is here. I don't know what this is. Might be a cheese grater or something. Um, interesting. Yeah, it's a little flat. Let's go here. Cody. Oh, Cody, these are beautiful. Look at that. Man, look at the... This is, this is where I get excited, folks, with photography. The overall composition is really, really nice. I really like it. We got a little bit of an overlap here, and we don't have it here. So, uh, Cody, sometimes that can, you know, you know, are we going to overlap or are we not? I don't know. This, it pulls my eye here. I have to figure that out. But one of the things I really love about photography is when we see this beautiful highlight over here, and yet right along the edge with that beautiful, nice little rim that just 
blends into the wood right there. The little rim just comes right around and blends into the wood. It keeps this, this item from blending into the background. And the back side of this is lit beautifully along with the uh, great texture here. Uh, and using warm on warm, really, really nice. Really nice, Cody. Are you here? I'd like to find out what lens she used for this. Don, she's on chat saying she doesn't have sound. Oh, another technical issue. All right, let me open up the chat. Um, yeah, I would go off and on again, Cody, but uh, let us know what lens you used on here, okay? Because it uh, looks, it's a very, very nice shot. Very nice shot. I love the brown on brown. Window on the left and bounce card on the right. Oh, you can't go wrong with windows, folks. Not at all. Not at all. Ron Mayhew, are you, you here, Ron? I am. I you am are. Here. Look at this. We got a that's a nice texture down in here. And these are nectarines, correct? Right. Uh, some nice, uh, I love your little fill here. What are you doing for fill? There's a uh, bounce card uh, on the right. Okay. I did just a bounce card on the right and the um, strobe with the scrim on the left. Uh, the strobe is going through a scrim? Um, I can't remember. I took, I took two, one with a scrim, one, there, it was in a softbox at least, and maybe a scrim as well. I, yeah, I'm thinking this is a softbox. I think I think so. It was the other one I took that um, I added the scrim. So yeah, the uh, here you, the nice thing about having a scrim in a softbox, Ron, is you've got the softbox, you've got the scrim, and you've got the softbox behind the scrim. So you can put a strobe behind the scrim and get an effect. You can put uh, the the softbox and get an effect, or you can put a softbox behind the scrim, and um, that would that won't change much of this, but it'll change right here. It'll change that edge. Softbox behind the scrim is going to be a little softer than this, and the reason mm -hmm. is the scrim. When you put a softbox behind it, you're going to get a little bit maybe brighter thing than if you put the softbox close. But the whole scrim lights up. So what happens is the scrim itself becomes a soft, even though it's got a main light, where a a uh, a softbox has that edge, that sharp edge, and that is what I'm think I'm seeing right here. Is yeah, sharp I, edge and, and yes, yes. Yep. If it it it's not reflecting that uh, a soft edge, it's reflecting a sharp edge. I love the color. I do like the brightness. I like the, the real poppy feeling of it. Well, that's why I didn't use the scrim. I wanted uh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, a little poppier. Yeah, yeah. Does, you, does this image have a glow right here, or is that just my eyes? Uh, ah, it's my eyes. It's your, I think it's yeah. your eyes. And, my, um, uh, I had cataract face, surgery. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, Facebook, Facebook dumbing down the images. Oh, they, they, they just, they wreck them. I had cataract surgery a couple of years ago, and uh, a couple, uh, maybe two weeks ago, scar tissue f is, has been forming all along, but now the scar tissue went over my optic nerve. And so I've got no focus in my right eye at all. Oh, dear. So it's kind of, it's kind of a neat thing because I got sharp focus here and I got a beautiful soft focus over here. It's, you know, the whole world has this little glow to it now. And of course they can see me really soon, August 27th. Oh. <laughs> all right, nicely done, Ron. There we go. Okay, I didn't oh, know okay. well that may be why we're seeing that edge too. You've got a, a, a flag up here, possibly. Possibly, really nice. Nice set, nice set. I like your set. I love the fact that you're using flags. Oh, thank you. I used to, used to say that I can tell if it, when a photographer has been doing it for a while and has actually faced the, the prospects of, of working a job because they use flags and newbies never use flags. 
You're laughing. You're right. You know I'm right, right? Yeah. <laughs> newbies <laughs> never use flags. <laughs> well, I'd consider myself newbie, but uh, I'm just <laughs> yeah. probably something from one of your videos I've watched. Yeah, maybe. It could be, yep. All right. Bob Morak. Is it Morak, Bob? Yes, it is. Yep, Bob Morak. Right. Very nice. I love the uh, the cool tones, the greens, against the warm tones of the browns. Really nice. Uh, I, I like the gradient dark back here, bringing it up here. Did you do this in post, this darkness right here? No, I just I put up a black card to, to shade that corner, which okay. it, it was super, super bright. I put that there, and it worked perfectly. There's no, okay. no, no post I think, at all. I think it's a tad too dark because it kind of drops off real heavy. Uh -huh. Pull it back up in Lightroom, just a little bit, little bit, uh, maybe like here. Okay. A little heavy over there, so it pulls our eyes down. Uh, th these look really great. Your shooting looks like you're about 11 or 16. It was actually 4.5. 4.5. Yeah, I, I looked it up this morning to see what it was. So. What lens is this? It's a nifty 50, 50 millimeter, 1.8. How big are these? Um, that log is about 12 inches long. Oh, okay. All right. I was thinking these are little, little small. These are big necklaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause you're losing focus back here. Yeah. I did that on purpose. Okay. Yep. Um, next time you're shooting them, don't do that on purpose. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Um, sure. This is their product. Right. They don't want to see their product out of focus. Commercially, mm -hmm. artistically, or editorially, you're fine. If you get my drift. Right. right. For an ad, they want to see it in focus. They really do. Um, but for, for a, a, a beautiful uh, shot that they would run in the magazine, this looks fine. Watch out cropping up the top of their product. Uh, all product photography is baby photography. These right. are the babies that they have put their blood, sweat, and tears into and puts food on the table. Don't crop their babies' heads. Uh, love the I, light. I don't, think that was, I don't think that was cropped in my picture. It might have lost something sending it up. Facebook maybe did it? Could be, yeah. Could be possible, yeah. Um, um, and what is your light source? Did you have a behind the scenes? Yeah, there's one right next to it. All right. It's a big scrim. There. Okay. Good, good. I, I think if I were to do it again, I'd raise the softbox higher and move it back from the scrim. I would tell you to do this. Take the softbox and get it right here. Like that. Over this, this type of set. Drop that light down from the top side. Get this soft box, your little soft box here. Get mm -hmm. it right back here. And let this scrim wrap around those beads a little bit. You know? Okay. Like this. Rule of thumb that I, I'm kind of religious about. Start with your light in as close to your subject as you can get it without it being in the camera. Start there. Pull it back to taste. If we start wherever you choose to put your light and just like, well, I'm going to put it here. And that's where we tend to, to, to do it. And we leave it there. And that's, I would say nine times out of 10 is probably not the right place for the light. Got to really play with it. I would get, uh, get that light right in really close. Uh, and you'll, you'll really like the look you get in that close. You're right now. I'm going to say three feet. Mm, no, probably two. At most. Two feet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Two feet away. Yeah. You get it. I, I get it right in on top. So we'll look at the picture again here. Yep. 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 Um, uh, and one last thing, just an idea. See how these things go over the top of the rock. These uh -huh. let them go over the top of the background too. As the background peaks underneath it, it spoils that drama of the necklace going over the the log, bring your horizon line down just to under the log right about there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, I understand. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. All right, hey, thank you very much for doing this, by the way. Oh, you're very welcome.
I love doing this. I get more out of this than you guys do. Trust me. I love doing this. So um, I can say it's totally selfish on my part. It's not, but uh, I, I do indeed love doing it. Arnold. Hi, Don. Hi. Is this, a re is this a redo of the one you did on the wood? No. No, this is totally new. Um, the idea for this one is like it's a found object, like some forest. And it's this a is a concept. Yeah, it's a and that's the other reason that I had this concept is like I want it to be in place, sort of like you just found it there. So that's the setup, and that's the, actually the motivation for for the whole thing. You, you're um, um, you're dead on here. You got a behind the scenes. Oh uh, yeah, I do you do? Okay. So that's a scrim. And there's an octobox uh, behind it. Yeah. And I started out with just that. And it was just so dark. I mean, so high contrast. So I had to add the, the bounce card. Well, the light reflectors. So and this is. That, yeah. It was just. Either, okay. Both high reflectors. Too high. Yeah. I love did you, uh, the, the, this here, the light. And it goes dark. Is that um, Photoshop? No, no. Well, yeah. I did add a little bit, very subtle vignette. Okay. Very subtle. Okay. Um, you hit all the, the the marks here. You've got your your wallet right at the camera. We have no doubt what we're looking at. I love this little. Is this the probably the tent it comes in? It's the box, yeah. Yeah, it's the box yeah. that comes in. Beautiful. A yeah, little bit of, of uh, brighter light here. I don't know if you did that or if that's how the box No, is. that's the way I shot it. That's yeah. just... Really, really nice. All the rocks, everything. Super sharp. Um, small aperture or did you uh, focus that? It's an F20, F25, okay. so there was no focus stacking. You hit... Uh, this is great. See the, you got to see the label and you see the stitching. Solid. Okay. That's so important to see that do, stitching. Um, do you the only think thing I was successful say, in the texture aspect oh, of it. Beautiful. I think your highlight is maybe eh, I was gonna say maybe it's a little too bright. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't well, bring it bring it down. You know, a tiny bit, quarter of a, a third of a stop, maybe. Okay. okay? Um, right. And see what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really bother me at all. I, I'm okay with it. Um, okay. But it is very, it, it does pull your eye because it's a very right. bright line against a very dark wallet. So it does okay. have a all tendency. Right. Just play with all that. Right. looks really good. What lens? Um, 105 macro. 105? Yeah. Nicely done, sir. Is that a light that he has in the front of the set? A small light? Uh, no. Well, actually, if you look at, yeah, that light, because I shot this in the dark, that LED light is just for the focus. That's it. Okay. Because without that, it would be totally black. You, yeah, what did what you say? You shot it at 22 and a half? Uh, F25, actually. 25? Was, okay, yeah. yeah. This, this guy here is never going to light up F25. That's not just for focus. Not with a flash I mean, shutter, shutter speed. Yeah. You'd have to have like a half second or something. Uh, so I, th what is the, the, I think it's this thing that they're, he's referring to. You see it right here? It's a, it looks like a white card. Is it a white card? It's or? actually silver. It's silver like card. The, okay. inside of a coffee. Um, what do you call that? Um, yeah, the coffee bean bag. The coffee bean bag, yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I had there. Those and of you I who are new, uh, coffee bean bag, the inside of coffee bean bags, beautiful reflectors. Beautiful wow. reflecting. Just put it on a, that's what we're seeing up here. Who asked that wow. question? I did, Jonathan Haber. Jonathan, yeah, that's why I think what we're seeing right here is that, um, I love it. I love that it. little bit of coffee, li coffee liner up front. Nicely done, sir. Thank you. Rainy? Hi, Don. Hi, Rainy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. When I first saw this, 
I thought, hmm, not crazy about the way the silverware is lit up. And now I see it big, and I do like the way the silver is lit up. That's very nice. What I like most is really not a picture of silverware. It's a picture of the items in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got, somebody's got a radio on, folks. Somebody, if you could turn your radio off or hit mute. Um, okay. I think that's probably me. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> your, your angles are perfect. Thank you. And that's really, really important on a shot like this. Yeah, it was a lot of chasing reflections there. Yep. I think <laughs> I think I would open these up. Can't mm -hmm. really see them, so okay. we're gonna have to cheat them a little bit, um, bring them up a little bit. And where is your light, Rainy? Uh, it is off to the side. Um, see the behind the scenes there. It was a uh, you know like one of those Home Depot lights. Okay. And it's going in. It's going in a scrim, and then there's mm -hmm. cards around it. Yep. Okay. And then I shot through the top to try to get rid of the reflections. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, you okay, did really well, nice. I know. Call me before you guys come. How about that? Right, mm -hmm. add a, add a, maybe on each side of these, in Photoshop or Lightroom, mm -hmm. add a little bit of light tiny bit okay. of light to give a little direction to them mm -hmm. uh, yeah. definitely pull these up Amazing. Pull these okay up. really nice All right. what lens oh, thank you what lens uh 80 85 millimeter okay how did you shoot down what are you standing on a ladder or are you bending <laughs> over that thing? yeah no yeah i had to climb way up there and then i had a ladder and i was sitting on the ladder so. you remember <laughs> rule number three rainy do not hurt yourself while you're making photographs it's like not yeah i didn't think about it when i picked that lens i was like oh my god i gotta get so far away <laughs> we never think about that when we never <laughs> it's only at the last moment minute when you're climbing the scaffold and you think what was i thinking Nice right. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Jonathan Haber. Thank you. Hi, Thank you, Rainy. Nicely done, Jonathan. Uh, good texture in here. And we can see the, the beautiful, how glossy this bowl is by your great soft highlight up there. So we get this great glossy bowl and the, uh, the shells. But I love the texture of these guys up here. Really nice. The shiny right. one's got the nice highlight on it. We've got the edge to it and the rougher ones. We just see the lights and darks all the way through here. Um, do you have a behind the scenes? Yes, I do. Let's take a look. I think at that. next time I would put those three shells that are on the table to the left so they're in the light. Yeah, we're going to go. We're going to come back to that. Okay. I just want to see how you did this here. Ooh, double diffusion. Yeah, it really softened it up. The um, the shells were just being blown out, the, the, the corners without without the single scrim. There's a there's an LED panel to the left that the, mm -hmm. uh, to light mm -hmm. it. You can't see. You know, you, uh, the 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 secondary scrim, especially when it's a foot away from the first scrim, softens the edges. But what it also does is softens the contrast because it mm -hmm. diffuses it again. You know, um, and it scatters the light again. So it's the edge of the light that gets diffused. Um, do y'all do y'all know what a Gary Fong is? A Fong thing that goes on your flash. Yeah. And they'll and they so your flash is like we're talking about a camera flash here. Your flash is like this, and then they put this little thing on the front, and it's like a a bowl here. You know, with a uh, or a stofen, you know, just comes right on the front of it. These things, and they'll say, "Oh, it softens the light." No, it does not soften the light. The light is made soft by the size of the light source. In 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 relationship to the subject, so a very a six inch hard light is going to be very soft on a single piece of peppercorn. What it does is it diffuses the edge. So that sharp edge uh, along the nose, for instance, the shadow, becomes a softer edge because of the diffusion. And we see that softer edge as soft light. It's not. Shadow is still just as deep as it was uh, with the straight light. And when you add the second diffusion, you diffuse it again. So essentially, you take it out to here. And that's what's happening on, the, on your shells. That's why you take that 
that hot spot off. That's very cool. All right, let's look at the, sh the shot again. Yes, I totally agree. Get these guys out in, this, in the light here, okay? Uh, but most importantly, most importantly, your horizon line is almost to the top of the bowl. And the question that we have visually is, what is all of that wood for in the photograph? The answer is nothing. It, does, it serves no purpose, right? And what it does is it, it kind of squishes the bowl. Lower your horizon line by getting the bowl back. Lower your horizon line to just about here. And then the bowl sticks out in front of your black background. We see this highlight better. We'll see this highlight over here. See that little hot, bright highlight right there? Yeah. It'll stand out against the black. It doesn't really stand out against the wood. So get that, that, that background lower. You could probably even take it as low as here and still have the feeling of it sitting on a, on a table or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, try that out, all right? Well, I will, thank you. And your lens, sir. That's a 50 millimeter 50? On, a, on a crop sensor. Okay. Yeah, these are these uh, shells. Uh, do you use Lightroom or Capture One, sir? Lightroom, but I didn't do any, the only post processing I did was just to straighten it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do any post for the for the this demonstration. Okay. I would warm the shells. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. And I've done that. I have a second version then for myself. Oh, did you do that? Yeah, yep. and I've yep. lightened up the two, the three shells in the front. Yeah, right. I would pull these up a little bit. Yeah, warm they, they, the they shells, keep the, the this nice and and uh, and blue, uh, yeah. and have that. Uh, I'd probably even warm up the the wood a little bit. Mm -hmm. Really set that blue off. All mm -hmm. right, very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, somebody's going to be buying a new. Did you do this just for the shot, Josh? Josh here. All right. Uh, well, Josh is not here. Josh, really nice. Look like looks like you brought your light in from the top. I'm here. See, are you here? You are here. Yeah. There you are. Couldn't get unmuted. Yeah, that's not my phone. I found that like that. <laughs> well, that's good, Josh, because I yeah. was going to say if you get a little overzealous doing this class, uh, it can be very expensive. So, but I mean, it had a working SD card in it, so that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> is there a behind the scenes yep all right all right so we got a little um very this is a small or was that about a 32 inch or 24 inch uh 24 24 inch behind it uh got it up nice and close to the subject love that love that uh where did you get the rocks like bottom like uh home depot rocks Yep. God, they look great, man. Thank you. They look great. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, no fill, right? Nope. Nope. Just let it just let it fall where it may. That looks great. Got the highlights all in the in the broken glass uh, and the rocks. And I really, really like the light on this thing. Notice that it's brighter here than it is here. You didn't do that in Photoshop, correct? No, no, I did that with the light. Do you know why that's that way? Because I put it at an angle and it kind of, mm, I think. There's, there's actually a scientific physics reason for it. Okay. It's called the inverse square law. You're so oh, close right. to your light up here that it's brighter. In fact, you're so close that it's probably falling off a two, by a full stop by the time it gets down here. So let's go look at your at your shot and you'll see what I mean. Whoops, sorry, the wrong way. Your light is here. It's probably a foot and a half away. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so at a foot and a half away, uh, well, what's a foot and a half? That's 18 inches. So nine inches away uh, from it is one stop. And look at that, and it's starting to fall off right here. That's two stops from the light thing. But the point is from here to here, it's falling off as well. Right. That's one of the reasons why I love to get that light up close. So we build in a natural gradient. 
Really nice shot, Josh. Thank have you. you. Have you shot uh, tabletop before? Uh, not really, like a little bit, but like I haven't even done much studio lighting, honestly. Well, let me ask you, uh, uh, anybody else that uh, we've looked at the pictures, uh, did you enjoy doing this tabletop? I did. Good. Good. Did you learn something from it that you might, what do you, what do you mostly shoot, Josh? I mostly shoot like nature, landscapes, okay. that kind of thing. Um, but I learned a lot just by doing that. So I'm sure if I keep going, I'll learn more, but I mean, oh, yeah. I have no lighting gear either. So that's another thing I've been fixing, <laughs> but like that speed light and that scrim was basically my whole kit, but I gotta get some grip and I bought some lights. That's, so. that's all right. Do you know the photographer, Joel Grimes? Uh, a little bit. Joel, um, I've followed Joel since he was in Denver. I mean, probably 30 years. Uh, about 25 years ago, Joel went out into the desert here in Arizona with a large format camera and studio strobes and lit up saguaro cactus with studio strobes. Oh, wow. I always remember it because they were unbelievably phenomenal images. Um, so... There's in la in uh, in the natural world photography. There's a place for lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done, sir. Really nice. Thank you. Love that shot. Love it. Thanks. Yep. Audi is not here. He said to uh, critique it, Audi. That's uh, a great highlight down through here. A little heavy. That highlights a little bright right in here. Um, in fact, I think the whole shot could come down about a half stop. Your background uh, looks, I love the, the beautiful finished wood here against the natural wood there. So we have uh, a very flat, uh, even though the light's hitting this wood, this diffused surface, the same as it's hitting the violin, the wax and the uh, super smooth uh, wood give us that highlight. Really, really nice. I think it's a little bit bright. I really do. Uh, and I think I would probably add a little bit of a vignette up at the top just so our eyes don't get up there and what happens when we get up to the top we actually have an ex exceptionally bright piece of wood there I'd tone that guy down a little bit just to let our eyes come back down through the violin nice design shooting it up like that yeah well done sir i like it you did well could did well with it Yep, and again, I would tell you, uh, again, I'm going to say this. Um, if we look at, the, oops, sorry. If we look at the, at the, the size of the, of the highlight here, I think we could get more highlight here and here, more highlight, if we got this guy, this guy, down to about here. Oops, wrong thing. Down to about here. Start with it here next time, Audie or even maybe there next time, and then pull it up and see what it does to the front, because I would love to have some highlights on the front of the, high, of the, front of the violin there, They're kind of bunched up down here. Let's get them up there. And thank you, sir. Good shot. Good shot. Disco time with Laura Nino. Laura, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right, so we've got these. Uh, these look old. Are they old? Yes, a little. <laughs> okay, they look old. Um, and uh, looks like you built a. Do you have a behind the scenes? No, we do not. Yeah, in the comment. Oh, in the comment. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Facebook takes forever to open these comment images. Do, 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 do. Either that or they just don't like me. All right, so going through a scrim, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is happening here? This just uses a fill card? Hey, yes, I use the, the fill card too. Okay. This is a little of the light of the window. I don't know. It's my first time doing this. Oh. Hey, everybody has a first time doing it. Uh, it's it's really nice to show this um, these highlights because we see all the patina in this thing. Okay. We see all the old um, the way the the glass is 
formed and we get a really, really nice feeling for it. Your, um, your fill card over here, this fill card there, uh, might, uh -huh. might maybe bring it towards the camera a little more next time. We'll bring okay. that light into here a little bit. Uh, okay. Open it up. Uh, I think side lighting was a good choice for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, and here's here comes the but. There's always a but, right? Yes. But, um, if we put something above it, say a, a white card up here coming towards your scrim, you know, maybe this far, so uh -huh. the light is going to come through the scrim, light up the white card, oh, the white okay. card is going yes. to light up the top of the, of the balls. Yes, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. We'll get a little easy. bit more up here, a little bit more definition. Okay, okay. What lens did you use? Uh, it was a uh, 15 to 55. Okay, and you're on a uh, crop sensor? No, it was not. Oh, yeah, 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 it's a crop camera. Okay. So, uh, and you shot it probably somewhere around... It was 44 millimeters. 44, okay. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, nicely done. Good job. Solid okay, job. You for so your, I mean, you've never done it before. I mean, you, you know. No, it's my first time. Thank you so I, much. I certainly mm -hmm. wish the first time I shot still life, it came out that nice. Because um, it didn't. Uh, Kit, are you here? I am here, Don. Dude, this is yeah. great. What inspired Thanks. you? Well, I started doing beekeeping this year so we just got some honey and it just looked cool through the bottles yeah beautiful shot your design is perfect little things uh, kit kit's been with with me for a while so he's got some things when you're working with wood folks like this that center line here just got to be nailed on when you're doing tabletop and he's got it absolutely ver and i don't care if you're using that particular you know, you don't have to use the slot between the woods. You can use the grain, but whatever that center grain, you've got to run up here. If you're just a, two inches to the left, then then the, the straight up grain goes to that one instead of the dead in the center. Um, really, really nice kit. Did you Thank put you. it behind the scenes? Yeah, next one. Oh, wait a minute. You got, you got all that light through the honey with the uh, dark field lighting? I did because the, the scrim in the back was about two feet above that black board. Got it. Okay. So, it so it's really wrapped around. Yeah, it did. And all and the honey isn't like wine either. It's thicker. And it's got a texture to it. Yeah. Oh man. That's a, that's definitely a, um, were you one of the one of the photographers ran out and got that Gary Perwheeler book? Um, no. Okay, because this this just reminds me of Perwheeler so much. Wonderful image, definitely a portfolio shot. I, and, I will um, say that when I set these things up, I tend to hear your voice in my head telling me to line things up right and to dust off and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's that's my plan. This is I'm going to take over the world by the, the, voice, the voice in the head thing. That's my plan. I'm a little behind schedule because I only got like 19 people, but I'll get there. You'll get there. I'll get there. Thanks. One one person at a time. Really very nice shot, man. Super, super. And for those of you wondering what we were talking about, dark field lighting, the black is his background, but his light, as you see, wraps around on both sides and over the top. And so you're shooting into a black background, but you've got light bleeding in from everywhere. The white cards are there to give the highlights up the side. And the white back here is just simply lighting up that honey um, so that it becomes golden when you see it. And there's your white cards on each side there. Right Don, I did have a little soft box in the front because the, the light behind it threw a shadow in the front and I just cut the shadow down just a little bit. Okay, and is that in front of the camera low or is that above it? It was in between the camera and the jars. Okay. Oh, I totally it. Beautifully done. Thank you. 
Absolutely. Uh, Mark Shaw. Hi, Don. Hi, Mark. How are you? Good. All right. Okay, so we've got um, some great texture in the wood, in the uh, the muffins here, and the old thing is this window light, Mark? No, nope. no. Nope. There's a behind the scenes shot, and I think it's the next one. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, let me let me uh, start with. I think your fill card is too far away. It's okay. It's not filling in here where we want it to fill. Um, and if you took another card, so you got this card coming straight up. Let's say we put it right here, and you got it coming straight up from the table like that. The top of the jelly, and angle of incidence, angle of reflection. The top of the jelly. It's really reflecting nothing over here. Yeah. So what we do is we bring a white card out like this from that white card, which captures the light, lights this card up, and then the jelly mm -hmm. reflects that card. That is what I think you're missing here in the in your shot. Let's go back and look at the shot. Yeah, we're not getting enough of the jelly. Interesting. Well, okay. peanut butter is a, a a brighter inherent color, so it's coming up in those midtones. But the jelly, because it's so dark, we have to provide a highlight for it. Yeah, cool. All right. And what lens, sir? Uh, twenty-four to seventy, and at seventy. At seventy. Okay. I love all the little pieces of bread and the the, the grain in here being caught. Uh, and you went with that low, low light, which, uh, you know, sometimes can be dangerous to go with it that low, but it really works on this shot, really provides some nice interest. Now, if we could get the top of the, the jelly to light up, you got it. All right? Thanks, Don. You betcha, Mark. No, I agree. In hindsight, I after you pointed it out, I could totally understand what you're saying. Yep. Good. Yeah. And I don't think I would, I, you know, first of all, you probably ate these bad boys. Damn right they did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I knew they wouldn't last. Um, but if you do it again, which is always a treat because you get two more sandwiches to eat. Uh, if you do it again and you bring that card over the top, you'll watch these guys just light up with that beautiful reflection. Oh, right. I'm going to try this again. Guaranteed. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Don. Mm-hmm. Here's a new name, Lisa Banks Stewart. Lisa, are you here? I am here. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good. So we shot a what is this a a, a detergent or a pan pump? Yeah, a, a soap dispenser. Okay, on bubble wrap. Yes. Nicely done. How fun. Uh, are what's the how are you getting those bubbles into the shot? Are they? I'm blowing in, them. <laughs> okay, so they're they're in the shot. You didn't Photoshop them in. No, I had the 10 second timer going, mm -hmm. and I would uh, blow the bubbles as it got down towards the the time where it was to click. Got it. Well, I, you did you did great. <laughs> Thank you. Now let me let me ask you this. Go on and be and be truthful. How many did you get? How many shots did you get with absolutely no bubbles in it? <laughs> uh, more than I had with yes. bubbles. <laughs> yes. It's like the first time you do a pour shot. You get 60 shots and 40 of them. There's absolutely nothing happening. The glass is just sitting there. So right. You, and, or, and then or, I dropped, then as I said in my comments, I, I dropped, I went to change something and I dropped the dispenser on the floor and it shattered. So oh, well. that was the end of my shot was the, 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 the soap bubbles that are ethereal and they come and go or just sort of a metaphor for the uh, actual soap dispenser. Oh, yeah, I guess so. It was there and then it wasn't. Um, you got a little bit of texture in the soap dispenser that we're seeing. However, it does look out of focus. Is it out of focus? I what, didn't what, think it was. But what camera did you shoot it with? A Canon. 
Well, 5D? A 5D, a cannon? Yeah. yeah. Remember, when you're shooting with cannons, focus is not really a necessary part of the experience, cannon folks figure. Um, I shoot cannon and I fight with my focus all the time. It looks a little out. I want you to check the transparency or the check the transparency. Woo, date okay. yourself, Don. Uh, this looks really sharp right there. Looks sharp all the way up to right there. Okay, I will check it. And what did you shoot it with? What uh, lens and? A 50 millimeter. Uh, and what ISO? I mean, uh, what, what ap aperture? Um, it was at uh, f3.5 at two hundredths of a one. Uh, two hundredths of a second. Okay. Yeah. Because I was I, trying to get the bubbles in yep. focus, what was your but ISO? I didn't want the bubble wrap behind it to be too much in focus. What was your ISO? <sighs> Honestly, I can't remember. I didn't make note of that. I'd have to. Go okay, so you were at three point five. I bet you could have gone to five point six and still not bought the, brought that rub, bubble wrap. Yeah. Into it. I think you'd be fine there, and I think that's probably what you needed. Yeah. The other maybe. thing is, where did you focus on the object? Um, I was trying to focus actually on the silver part of the dispenser. Okay. Yeah it it looked it looks like it picked it up down here because you can see that bubble wrap right there is really yeah. really in focus. Yeah. But I think right there at the top we're losing it. Check it out anyway. Your lighting looks great. Got highlight down the side, highlight down the side. We got texture here. So the, the two side lights are presenting nice texture in the bottle. That works mm -hmm. really well. Uh, is there a behind the scenes? There is. It should be the next one. All right. Okay, so are those both scrims then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I see. Those are um, LC L LCDs? Yes. Cool. One on each side. Cool. Here's how you can get your bubble wrap to um, stay out of focus. Do you see how you have it right here and it goes right up behind the product? product? Yeah, create some in, distance. In reality, it doesn't need to do that. In reality, you've got your, let's say this is your tabletop here. You've got your subject here and you're shooting it. Your bubble wrap, you're doing this with it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What if you did this with it? Right. You know, as long yeah. as it's that high off the, the, the thing, you're safe. So you could actually take this bubble wrap you know, way out there before it came up. That right. has how you ensure your depth of field uh, to, be, um, to be right. And by the way, that works for people too. You don't want to, uh, if you're shooting people in the studio and you have that, that seamless like this and your person is standing here, that seamless angle of incidence, angle of reflection, if it's a black seamless or a dark gray seamless or a blue seamless, you're going to get a highlight right through the paper. Paper is not totally matte. You get a highlight there. So what you do is you put the paper on the floor where the person is going to stand it, and then you just do this way up, and you never end up with any highlights. So absolutely perfect sweep of white. or uh, You put your own light on it, so you put a soft box, you know, just light the background like that. And you got perfect, perfect, clean background. And I appreciate that tip. Not a problem. Do you mostly shoot people? No, I never shoot people. Oh, are you a product shooter? No. No. Kitties? I'm a, pardon? Kitties? <laughs> Just a, a little bit of here and there of everything. Oh, but, good. Yeah, I'm good. still trying. Well, you're, this is going to be I'm great. Trying to find what my main interest is, so. This is going to be great for you. Uh, learning tabletop photography will teach you everything about people, landscape, food, all of it. Because we're just doing all of the stuff we do there on a small, on a small table. We're just yeah, no. doing it so. Great. Really nice. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, looks like I've got this one. Joe Cosentino. Hey, Don. Joe Cosentino, also known as Joey C. How are you, my friend? I'm good. How you doing? Good. It's my pastel age. 
Love the light, man. You got that whole looking like daylight thing down really nice here. That was the idea. Originally, I thought I could do it with one light, but it didn't work out that nah, way. Nah, not one light, no. Nope, that's the thing. We can make it look like the sun, but we got to fill it in. Right. <laughs> uh, label looks really good. Glasses look good. The highlight is great on the bottle. Uh, is this a single shot, Joe, or did you... Um, Comp it in. Comp uh, composite it all? Oh, oh well, the, yeah, the bottle cap got dark. But the rest, you'll see there's a reflector off on the right-hand side, and I shot a light across from the left-hand side to kick light into the front of the bottle. Okay. And then you, you, you composite it in the cap? Just the cap was a little dark. Yep. Very nice. Let's go look at your behind-the-scenes here, which is fun. There's the sun. Yep, that's the sun. That's got a CTO gel. Originally, it was just a bare flash, and they just put it inside that soft box. It just, it, I don't know, did something nicer to the light. So if I that, look at this, is actually lighting up the card. Lighting up the card in that big reflector. Uh, okay, I started so you, the move. I moved them, and then realized I forgot to shoot the final behind the scenes. I put them back quick, but um. Yeah, so that's how they were set up. That card on the right, the closer one, was a little bit closer to the table. Okay, so your your son is lighting up this card. Yeah, being reflected back in the cis side of the the glasses, and that. the glasses, and the IPA logo mm -hmm. and everything. And then right. this one is filling in a little bit right. over here. Um, where is this light coming from? That. That's your shop light. No, that's because I said this after I shot. That's the light in the ceiling. It's shooting Got it. down. Okay. Yeah. Then there's, a, there's another speed light on the floor behind the light, the background paper up, that blue paper. You can see the little stand on the bottom of the okay. table. Okay, it's lighting up this paper here? Right, with a, like a stove on it. Very clean. Nice set. Really Thanks. nice set. Really nice set. Good shot, Joe. Thank you. Yep. It's hard to get a shot like that in Buffalo. Or, <laughs> where, where? Whitesboro. Whitesboro, yeah. This is the, the, uh, the sandy beaches of Whitesboro. Well, today we got sun. <laughs> <laughs> really nice, sir. Thank you. Oh, here's a new name. Beautiful shot. Is it Yona? Il Yona or Ilona? Is Ilona here? No? Oh, okay. Uh, wow. Look at the texture in the in the ties. Beautiful, beautiful. All the way through. And I see we're using natural light and a chair to block off the light. Wow. Nicely done. Nicely done. This, I think this is the set we were looking at right here. There's the metal. So we got natural light everywhere. Oh, it's the, uh, the little card that's doing the, the dark. I love that you put the dark in here, Alona. I love it because it just pulls and sets that off really well. Uh, it has a really, really nice feeling. I think I might add a little bit of dark over here. Not nearly this. Not nearly. Like a third of a stop. Just tiny bit and the same coming around on this side just darken it up let's bring it bring the eye back into here i love the old metal look in here this is beautifully done uh did you notice, natural light natural did you notice light. her comment says this is a focus stacking of 11 okay, okay focus stacked in beautiful that's a um that's a technique everyone needs to learn is focus stacking it's not hard and the, and the nice thing is you have to buy a piece of gear, but it's not a very expensive piece of gear. I recommend rails. Um, my rails cost under 50 bucks. Uh, really, really nicely, nicely done. And Helican right now is having a uh, special or a new way you can buy. I guess you can rent Helican now for something like $30 a year. You get Helican. Uh, that'll really help you do a great job. Really, really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Ilona, beautiful shot. Carla. Hi. Hi, Carla. Wow, nice job. So we got a, um, is this a speed light softbox? Yes. It's a strip light. A little strip light? Okay. Yeah. Are you using, it doesn't look like, you're not using this to mask anything, are you? The no. chair? No. I just needed something lower so I can photograph okay. from the top. Okay. And you put your white cards all the way around here, yeah. getting some nice fill all the way around, and just the strip light. Very clean. And let's go look at that shot again. Yeah. See this little line around here? Love it. That's how we set off a black bowl on a black uh, front. The um, highlight right here. Uh, have you ever shot tabletop before? Not really. Okay, so I'm only going to beat you up a tiny bit, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this highlight center it center it next time don't let it run over here and then okay. cut off here center it and the reason i say that is you've centered everything else is so geometric right okay the, 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 the way your light's coming in the line for the beans i would just simply move that a little bit to the side or move it more to this side so it like does does something like this and runs down over here. Anything, anytime you're working with something that's centered and you're gonna add something that would add to the image, either center it with the image or move it so far off center that it doesn't look like a mistake or look like it's haphazard. Okay. So it's like tilting the camera. If you tilt it like three degrees, it looks like you, you know, you're gonna have to fix it in Photoshop. It's just wrong. If you tilt it 30 degrees, that was a deliberate thing. So we want to be deliberate. Uh, and that's the only thing I can say about your image that I think you uh, uh, need work on. That tiny little thing there, because the rest of it, beautifully done. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Did you enjoy shooting? Yes. This was my second attempt because the first one I spent like a whole day and I didn't like any of the photos. So I did this one last night. <laughs> yeah, you did great. You've got texture in the rice, texture in the beans. Um, we got the uh, beans and the rice that are on the ground are out of focus. Uh, you could have shot them in focus. It would still be a great shot. It doesn't really make any difference. Really, really nice. I love the way your strip box giving us a little bit of a reflection on the paper cardboard and then it just wipes out down here but then you bring this highlight back around here and the highlight from your card that's really great did you enjoy shooting tabletop i did good yes. <laughs> have you ever shot people okay. uh i do mostly people yeah <laughs> one thing about tabletop their um, aunties their aunties never die so they can't show up because yeah it, you know what i'm talking about right uh, they're never late and yeah. uh, they always come with uh, without their clothes stuffed in a bag and they don't complain and they don't complain that's right <laughs> that's right beautiful shot really well, well done. Oh, I want to ask you your lens please um, it was a 24 105 not sure what I had it on though okay I'm gonna say you're probably out quite a bit maybe 70 that every you're just so in on a 24 would have distorted everything so you yeah. got to be out a little bit all right nice all next right, time write you. it down so that you know because that's how you learn all right thank you all right, very good marie another name marie futrier futre futrier futrier yes very good like like there's any chance in hell i'll remember that but i'll i'll give it a shot <laughs> <laughs> you did well. <laughs> Boutrier, okay. Wow, that's really pretty too, Marie. Beautiful. Look at that. I love your highlights. Uh, I'm going to guess. Is this a softbox? It's a scrim. A scrim? Yeah, you have the behind the scene on the next picture. I always like to guess first. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, look at you. You've got your, 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 you've twisted your softbox. Now, yes. have you done that before? Did you learn that from the, uh, watching one of the videos? Um, my, uh, my husband showed me the trick. Good. He, he did a little bit of this and he, he told me that to have a gradient, he, it's the way to do. So I, That's I did. The, absolutely. I keep people usually. So basically he's earned his keep for another week. Yes. That's, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's a very, very nice set. I love it when we do this. Is how you get that beautiful. Look at that. You can even see the, the the gradient here. Your gradient. What you're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is you're gradient putting a gradient on your light source, which you can't do on a softbox. The softbox is bright from corner to corner. When you use a scrim and you tilt it it's brighter here than it is over there because it's going farther away from the light and you can get spectacular lights. Love your setup. Love the, the light down here. Just popping a little bit back up. And let's go back and see the result of this shot. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That little bit of white card down below is why we're seeing a little bit of texture on that avocado and why it's not disappearing. Look at that. Right here. Over. That's why. I, that's why I thought window. I thought, well, it's you know, it's, but that's really spectacular. And you did really well looking for tomatoes. How long did it take you to find these tomatoes with the perfect little curly cues? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. I'm in Arizona, Marie, and in Arizona, we're just like if they're usually just burned to a crisp by the time we get the tomato. <laughs> I, I'm in Gilbert. You're in Gilbert. Yes. Where did you find these here? Yes, I know. Right? Okay. I was surprised when you said that you were in Arizona. I was like, well, me too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you get these at Sprouts or something like that? Yes, yeah, Sprouts. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. I'll have to go to Sprouts. I love shooting tomatoes. I think they're fun. That's really, really pretty. Really, really pretty. A little bit dark over here and not matching over here. Let's match it up. Okay. Add a little bit of a, of a vignette there uh, another that than that look at that we get the shiny tomatoes the super glossy bottle the textury uh, avocado it's uh a really nice lens uh, 105 105 mm-hmm that's the nikon 105 yes one of the one of the best lenses they ever made my favorite my favorite ever made mm -hmm. yep did you say you've done this before, Marie? Never, first time. Um, this is your first time. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you later. Uh, I'm going to go bang us all my out of business. I'm going to go bang my head on the wall now. <laughs> Marie will be taking I'm, over I'm teaching the class from this point on. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you should be really proud of it because it's a really nice photograph. Thank you. Hey, Mark, we're all out of business. Right. David Sills going to David Stills going to put us all out of business. You know that, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Did he do something for this class? No, I don't think uh. so. No, I, I, I had to tw twist his arm to get him in collective. He says, "You sure you want to? I, I can be in collective." I said, "Absolutely." Right. We, uh, we have a a young man who took my Project Fifty Two class, which is for photography. He won it. He won the class actually. He won the class and he's a CGI, what would you, not CGI, yeah. what do you? Yeah, CGI. CGI artist. Uh, and he did really well in the class because he learned to see like a photographer rather than a CGI artist. So he's looking at lighting and filling. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's good, he's good. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's uh, definitely, uh, you look at his work and you think, you swear to God it's a photograph. <laughs> okay, Artemis, another new name. Okay. Artemis, are you out Hi. there? You Hi. You know Art. what? Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Certainly, certainly. Uh, this looks like so, my dinner last night. <laughs> so, in hindsight, I should have joined under my personal page. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so, this is uh, it's dog food, right? 
Well, cat food, yeah. Dog food, cat food, almost the same thing. Yeah, cat, food? cat food? Mm -hmm. Cat food's not quite as crunchy. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, we got the we got the texture in right in here. Now you chose a very slim depth of field. Yeah. Um, to enhance, the, I'm going to guess to enhance the texture right that we see right here. Yeah, that's correct. Nicely done. Uh, I love the reflection coming back in the bowl. Do you have it behind the scenes? I don't. Um, I'll do that next time. Okay. It was Tell really me where just your um, light is. Here. It's just a huge soft box on the top. And then I had a black bounce card leaning um, from the edge of the wood, leaning towards the, the bowl because I was getting, the wood was too bright in the back and I was getting a very sharp highlight on the edge of the silver. Yep. So I just used a bit, a, it was a very simple setup. Yep. You just, it looks very traditional to me. Top soft box with a, a, a flag back here to, to lower the light in the back. And the, the shallow depth of field is an artistic choice. There's no yes, that was right or wrong way to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's certainly not um, something, well, I mean. Uh, yeah, you so would not do this for the cat manufacturer. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they would come unglued. Their baby, as you said. <laughs> yeah, it's their babies, right? That's what, yeah. that's what pays their kids going to college. Um, but if you're working in an editorial sense, like a magazine or something, then this can be very appropriate. It really drives the eye. I will say this, uh, is Annalise, is that yes. it? Annalise? Yeah. I'll say this, Annalise. Have you ever printed something with this shallow depth of field? No. Okay, I want you to print this eight by 10 when you get a chance. Okay. What you notice when you print it is this super shallow depth of field looks great on screen. When we go to print, think about a stop or a stop and a half more because okay. there's so much out of focus that when we hold the print in our hand, it really can be overwhelming. So um, in commercial, uh, I, I always say bracket your aperture so that you shoot it at, um, you shot this at four? Um, 5.6. 5.6. So you got yeah. one at 5.6, 8, 11, and 16. Uh, because I guarantee you, when you deliver it to the client, they'll say, you know, Elise, Annalise, let's do something with minimum depth of field. And you go, okay, and you deliver this. The, I guarantee you the art director is going to go, that's nice. Did you shoot any at 16? And you think, what? You said minimal depth of field. So what I do is I want to be able to go, sure did. <laughs> Here you go. Okay. If you want yeah, 16, yeah. got it. You want 11, got it. Uh, nicely done. I love it. I think you can add a little more contrast and be good. Okay. Just tiny more. Really nice. Thank you. Whoa, Daniel Franks. Hey, Don. Hi, Daniel. What's doing? up, buddy? Here we are. Uh, not too much. Sorry, I forgot to delete this one from the album. I actually did a different shot. Oh, so okay. Is it? It's at the end. It's at the end? All right, we'll get to it then, sir. Yeah. Terry okay. McDermott, a name I haven't seen in a while. Hi, Don. Hi, how are you doing, Terry? I'm pretty good. We're going to be melting here starting tomorrow. <laughs> Where are you? In uh, just south of Portland, Oregon. I didn't make it up to Montana yet, so I'm still in Portland. And we're going to be in the 90s and 100s in the next few days. Well, if they'd stop burning down the courthouses, I could bring the temp down <laughs> at least five degrees. Yeah. Um, wow. That hot, huh? Yeah, we've yeah. been all spoiled with 70s and 80s, and all of a sudden, boom. <laughs> well, I'm not even sure about my motorcycle ride. I leave in, I leave uh, a week from this Tuesday. Oh, really? I'm not even sure. I mean, it's just really brutally hot, and there's fires everywhere. I've, oh, I've done that before and had to come back early. But we'll <laughs> see. All right. You got your blue and your silver up against the red here. I love the texture in these in these uh, leaves here. Um, just as it crosses my mind, I would say I wouldn't mind seeing more of the leaves in focus. Okay. Just to get uh, now, these are natural leaves. This isn't yes. lettuce or anything, right? Yeah, there's a uh, behind the scenes, and it's a plant that I moved onto the table. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so it's plant. It's not. It's not food leaves. It's no, they're begonias actually. Rex begonias. Okay. 
And what is the light? Um, just the late afternoon um, soft uh, shadow. Got it. Got so it. it's an east facing window in the afternoon. So there's just the nice uh, light shadow light coming in. Vignette dark, this leaf. Oh, okay. I tell you why. When I look at the, this, you know, that's the shot essentially. And that leaf reaches way out, out of focus, and it's too dang bright. Okay. If we darken that leaf up, it's going to let this leaf stand as a part of the image and, and wrap this image. You see what I'm saying? Yep, I do. Um, yep. As a matter of fact, you probably honestly could crop this bad, this, this thing. Actually, there's a second picture where I cropped it, but I wasn't sure if it was too close. Oh. I, you could probably take it in like that. Oh, um, you, put a, the... you put another picture in here? Yeah, a cropped version. Oops, oh. no, it, it was next to my behind the scenes one. Oh, it's it's later? No, no, it's right here uh, where you saw my behind the scene one. It's, it's, oh, no, no, it's right there next. It's in my. Right. Over here? Okay, got it, yeah. got it. <laughs> And I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. Yeah, there's that. That's the cropped one. I took some of that leaf out. <laughs> I could, yeah, see how it, see how the, the bracelet just becomes the subject? Yes. Um, yes. Are you using Lightroom or Capture One? Uh, CNX2. <laughs> Capture NX2, the Nikon, the old Nikon well, program. The old Nikon, uh, and then you then you take it into Photoshop, do you? No. Nope. No, that oh you don't. You just work with the uh, capture software. Yep. Okay. Yep. It has um, the control. It has the early control points and everything. Yep. I could, I could still I could still darken that part in the upper left. Yep. Yep. I would I would do. Here's what I would do. I'd take the red out of this, mm -hmm. even though it's totally natural. To have it in, I take okay. it out because the red is dull against the gray, and the silver pops okay. against the gray. So I go in with a brush and take that out, and then I probably would say, let's just use a, the, um, you know, the brush to change exposure, exposure, mm -hmm. brush, just to mm -hmm. bring these up a little bit, okay. make that side of the of the bracelet pop like this side of the bracelet pops. Okay. Yeah, when I got editing, I thought maybe if I'd used a little um, bounce card off here to the side, I could have added more silver instead of the red there. Possibly. Well, it's it's reflecting the, the leaf here, so yeah. So are you in a motorhome, Terry, or? No, no, I live, I live here, but I used to live in Montana for many years, and so I go back and forth, and I stay up at my sister's up there. Go up in? Um... Kalispell. Yeah, Kalispell. That's, that's, the, that's the goal. That's the final goal. Yep, and when you've gone on your trips before, I've suggested uh, places to drive and places to yep. see. <laughs> yep. Well, I can't drive through Glacier. I can only go in halfway and turn around and come back. Yeah, and which is understandable. They're having a lot of trouble up there with the, yeah. keeping yeah. the reservation healthy and stuff. So it's really sad. And I've actually not gone up yet because of that. So, or because just in general, yeah. Idaho's getting worse. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've heard. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait until probably Tuesday or Wednesday this week to decide whether I'm going to go up there or not. Yeah. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to make people up there uh, nervous around me. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to get up there and, quite frankly, be you know all of a sudden, well, we're shutting the state down and I'm stuck somewhere paying hotel bills. So. Yeah, in Oregon, right. in Oregon, we have to wear masks, and so it's. It's every, well, not everybody's happy about it, but it helps us keep our numbers down and keeps us healthy, so. Well, if all you, if all you got to complain about is wearing a mask, I'd consider yourself pretty darn lucky. Yes, we are. Thank you very much for doing this again. You're welcome. Ron, are you here? I am here, Don. How are you, Ron? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So we got the... Uh, very happy to be a part of this. It's a brand new experience for me, so... Shooting a tabletop? Uh, it's actually a treadmill top with a little golf mat on top of it. All right. All right. Uh, and do you have a behind the scenes, sir? I do. Let's go look at that first. Yeah, it's, it's right beside it, I think. 
All right. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, camera so is... Was, uh, late, late last night after trying a few other things and having all kinds of challenges with reflections and shadows and realizing I, I just don't know what I'm doing yet, so I simplified it and uh, there you have it. That's just fine. Your camera, I guess, is probably from over here as well? Uh, it, it, uh, I was holding it by hand, actually, and, and holding it right in this area here. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to go through three things that we're going to do to make your picture better. Okay. Number one, we don't light from the front. When you set okay. your light up, if it's in the same area where your camera is, it's in the wrong spot. Okay. 90 out of 100 times. There's no rule in photography. I don't never want to say, oh, you never light from the front because there are times when you do indeed. Uh, but for something like this, we want to see texture. So we probably want to put the light over here. Now that's going to throw a shadow of our little golf guy. Shadows aren't necessarily bad, Ron. Right? Okay. Not necessarily bad. Um, and you have, uh, is this a... a LED bulb in there, or is this one of those things you can cook a burger with? The uh, the bulb in here is is just a, a regular incandescent bulb. So it gets hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a piece of, of shower curtain, uh, just a little square <laughs> in front of it, right in front of your light here, and give okay. it about two inches of, of uh, space between the shower curtain and the light. If you put the shower curtain right up next to the light, it will catch fire. I know this good, very well. Good, good warning. Yes. Uh, then it, you drop it because it's on fire. It lands on your studio floor and burns a hole in the wood. I'm just saying I've heard that happens. Um, so you get a little flat. Once you put this around it, that you're going to soften that shadow amazingly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like this background that you've chosen here because it's it looks like a tufted pillow. It's yeah, it's a laptop uh, thing, you know. Case laptop, laptop case. Cushion. Yep, yeah, and it'll give you a little gradient from here back when you do it. So what we want to do to get texture is to either side light or backlight our subject from the side or the back, because what texture is, is a highlight and a shadow, highlight and a shadow. And what you're doing when you front light like this is your shadows are all going back so we don't see them. So let's mm -hmm. go back to your shot here. And you can see the grass, we see light and shadow, but we're just seeing the, the, the overall, we're not seeing the real texture of the grass that would be, mm -hmm. we would see from the side. Okay. Uh, what what uh, lens are you using, sir? Uh, it was a 16, uh, it's a Fuji uh, 16 by 280. Okay. And okay, it was nice. uh, F, F4 and one one hundredth of a second, I think, and a fairly high ISO, like three. Uh, oh, I, I can't recall. Yeah, with that, with that light, you're probably up 1600 at least, 2800 maybe? Yeah, it might have been 3200, yeah. Yeah. It looks a little out of focus, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure it's not me. Oh, okay. Today. So, all right. Very good. Don't well, let the golf, you. don't let the golf guy defeat you. Go back and shoot well, the golf guy. Here's, here's what I've been learning, Don, is that golf and photography are very similar. Mm -hmm. You can do nine, 10 or 11 things right, but you only have to do one thing wrong and you don't get the shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, also similar that uh, uh, your wives and husbands will tell you that a photography spouse can ruin a good walk. <laughs> this is also true. Yeah. Yep. They just want to go for a walk and we're pulling out our, going, stop, honey, I got to get a shot of this. And it's like, oh, well. All right. Andrew Kirkwood. Yeah, that's me. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes. How are you, Andrew? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, where are you calling in from? Um, I'm British and I live in, in Berlin, Germany. Burlington? Berlin, Germany. Oh, Berlin, Germany. Hands, hats off to Andrew, folks. What is it, like 10.30 at night, 9.30? Um, it's, yes, it's, um, it's half past 10. 
half past 10. All right. So he stayed up quite a while. Uh, really like this coming out of the, of the back like this. Uh, really, really think that's cool. That's really cool. And that's your shot right here, right? So actually, um, that's something that happened by uh, accident. I put water in the bottle, and mm -hmm. then the bottle sort of tipped up, and and some of the water came out. And I thought, oh wow, that looks really good. It wasn't something that I had uh, um, planned. Let me let me teach you a little bit more of how professional photographers do it. Mistakes and accidents are only not your fault when they're bad. <laughs> when, yeah. when it's a good one like this, you go, yeah, I worked on that. Really had to work on that drop. Um, when the drop first came out, it didn't actually look that uh, good. Um, uh, uh, I went and got myself a syringe and put, and put water down until it looked yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. And good for you for, we got a behind the scenes here. Yeah. And good for you for noticing that you had something going here. Yeah. Because quite frankly, the bottle laying over on the wood probably wouldn't be nearly as interesting as that. It wasn't. No. No. <laughs> no. Really nice. I like what you did here. You got your black card back here, throwing a shadow up in here. And that put the glass bottle up against the shadow which gives it great dimension. Have you shot tabletop before? No, 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 this is the first time. Wow. Well, damn. Beautifully, really, really nicely done. Um, you're, you're always gonna get my, you're always gonna get me to comment if your horizon line here, whatever this line is, is not straight. It's off. Mm -hmm ever so slightly as to look wrong. So get it into Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever you do, and get that guy going straight. And when you do, and you look at him, you know, if it's on a new layer, right? And yeah. you go between them, you're going to see, oh my God, it'll just make the shot better. It normally, just, yeah, uh, normally I, I would do that, but uh, this, but this is the, uh, the this is the JPEG that uh, came out of the camera, and I okay. Yeah. But um, you've got the raw. Yes. Yeah. 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 I would. I would get it. And the other thing I would do, um, Andrew, is just crop this out over here. We don't need yeah. to see that. Yeah. Yeah. What lens, sir? Um, it was micro for third, thirty millimeters, so it was a sixty on full frame. Yeah, really nice. And you shot pretty, what, uh, 11, 16, somewhere in there? Uh, I think that was, um, I think that was 5.6. But on really? a crop sensor, yeah, but on a crop sensor, that is like 10.5 or something. No, so 5.6 is 5.6. Okay. Yeah, that's been, a, that's been something that runs around the internet all, and I, it drives me crazy. Nope, 5.6 is 5.6. It's the same. The only thing well, that changes I, is you, you move your camera in and out, but that's changing because of lens, uh, uh, you know, focus distance. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I've, I've, I've gone up against that before, but no, it's the same. It, it really is the same. I took, I, took, um, I took maybe five shots each at different uh, apertures and then chose the, the best photo. Got it. Yeah, well, what, whatever you ended up doing, this looks very good back here. Yeah, uh, yeah. that is slightly out of focus at at the back. It's yeah. very, very slightly. <laughs> it just looked better than when the whole bottle was perfectly in focus. Yeah, well, I think I think you're probably right with that. I would have gone with just a little bit of out of focus. This is not the part of the shot. This is not the shot. It's not a product. It's a table. It's a still life. So you're totally fine with it. Here's your, this is the shot is this beautiful uh, drop of water with your soft is it a softbox or a scrim? A uh, scrim with a cheap LED uh, uh, panel behind it. Yep. Beautiful man, nicely done. I'm glad yeah. you caught that. Uh, 
I'm sorry. I'm glad you worked that, uh, that reflection in. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely that done. Water, water. Uh, thank you very much. Carla. Hi, Don. Hi, Carla. Carla is in South Africa. <laughs> wow. This is just beautiful, Carla. Wow. Thank you. You, um, your color, did you, how did you color correct it? Because your color of the pasta is like dead on. I actually, um, just in Lightroom, I desaturated the yellow a little bit and the orange, and that's all. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Because it was very yellow, actually, before I did that. And this is your... That's the behind the scenes. So there's the one light behind there with just a reflector. It's just a vertical yeah. softbox or, or scrim? No, it's a scrim. It's a scrim with a, with a light with just a normal small reflector thing on it, on the, light, on the strobe. Okay. Back far enough to light the whole scrim up, am I right? Yeah, it wasn't back that far, but yes, it was lighting up the whole scrim. Yeah. Okay. And it's side lit because you're shooting from over here down, right? Yes. So it's side yeah, it's lit. Lit from the, the left hand side. It's just a lovely shot. The, the, the texture through here, the texture of, of this, the texture of the, the slates, the different slates. Wow. <laughs> I'm jealous of her slate collection. <laughs> I didn't realize I had so many pieces. <laughs> She'll send you some, Mark. Uh, the <laughs> slate's not expensive, but shipping? Oh, right. my God. That's very nice, Carla. Just beautiful. Oh, and I love your, your side light. Uh, gives us all the texture in, the, in not only the bow tie, stuff to put the uh, metal and the, the different uh, look at the how the spaghetti just stands out from each other uh, there's no fill right yeah no um, and so without any fill and with all this darkness around it each spaghetti um, you know the ones up here are starting to reflect other spaghetti but as you come around here each piece of spaghetti is eventually going to get around the corner and you know reflect this this dark stuff here because spaghetti's shiny uh, and this stuff isn't nice Nice, nice, nice. Oh, what lens, Carla? Um, it was my 24 to 105, and I think I was pretty much at 105, standing okay. over it. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Very beautiful. Wow, I like this. Kim, Kim yeah, Sudbeck, another <laughs> new name. How are you, Kim? Good, 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 good. Have you done I still I joined you last time. I was um, going to say, you were here the uh, previous one, right? Yes, yes. And so this is, you You had not shot tabletop before the last one, correct? Correct, right. And now you're doing this stuff. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really cool. <laughs> and honestly, I cannot get to my camera. We are remodeling. And so I wasn't going to do an assignment this week. And I thought, I thought, no, just play around. So this is done with my iPhone. iPhone, yeah. Yeah. Is it iPhone on portrait? No, no. No? Trigger, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we need, all of us as photographers, we need to stop thinking of the iPhone as a toy. It's no longer a toy. It really is being you uh, mixed into workflow. I just saw a, um, uh, a wonderful photo expose on, uh, um, I want to say somewhere in the Balkans, uh, um, I can't remember it, uh, but the photojournalist, uh, because they're so wary of cameras, you don't want to go walking around the parts of the world that he was with, you know, three cannons hanging around from, from you because they'll take them. Uh, and he did it all with his iPhone, and they're stunning photographs. So nothing wrong with this. This this should be a poster. You know what? I So I'm an educator. I retired. Well, I, I went into um, university work now, but so I'm not necessarily 
quote unquote retired and retired from K-12 system. But so when I posted it, a bunch of people said, can I print this for my classroom? So, yeah. You know, that'd be, be a great place here for a, like a quote from a, you know, about diversity. Oh yeah. You know, right there, right here, Just make a poster of it. Very nice. Thank you. And what's your lighting, Kim? Or do you have it behind the scenes or is it? I, I, I didn't. Um, so it's just from a um, window light. Um, right before magic hour. So the sun was coming down, but yeah. Yeah, really nice. And post-processing, because this isn't right out of camera, I'm sure. Um, a little bit. I cleaned up. There were some spots on the um, table. Um, and then I saturated the colors a little bit, but and you used, you, you brought in the Photoshop or did yes, you use a, yes. okay. So fun. Yes. Yep. Really nice. Good Thank job. You. Thank Good you. job. Where, where's your camera locked away in the painting, the room being painted? Well, so I wasn't very smart. We are having carpet. And so the, my quote unquote office, I moved everything out and I had my camera inside there and it, it's so packed in back in the corner that um, <laughs> if I was younger, I'd be able to crawl underneath it all and get it, but I'm, I'm too old to do that now. So I'm in the process of moving it all back in. And so next week I should have it. Or You'll get it. Yeah. You'll get it. Yeah. All right. Nicely done. Thank super, you. Super nice. And another new name, Veronica. Is Veronica here? Okay, is so there behind the scenes? There is a behind the scenes. All right, we're gonna start here, Veronica. We've got window light, looks like window light, and a card, a white card on this side. To give us that highlight there. Really nice. Not a bad, not a bad setup there. Big window Hi, looks I'm out. Here. What's that? I'm here. Oh, you are there. Okay, good. Yeah. So we got so, a white card to one side. Yeah. And is that a window or is it a scrim, Veronica? No, I have a window and on one side it's actually an LED light. Oh, okay. Go back. I tried on. I That's um, this guy. So behind is a V flat. Um, but if you could see, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're on it right now. That's the, um, LED light. The LED is right there. Yeah. Uh, and that's not going through a scrim or anything. It's just that panel from here. Correct. Okay. And window light over here. Right. Now, have you, are you a tabletop shooter? No, no, I'm I'm new to this. That's fine. Yeah. Everybody's new. And um, and I didn't. The only thing I did in retouch is um, on the V flat. It has the fold line, so I try to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I just did like one stop um, writer to open it up a bit, but I didn't touch anything else. Okay. How do you get your exposure? Through the camera or are you using a light meter? Um, through the camera. camera? Yeah. Okay. Just, you know, shot after shot trying to see what it is. My settings are 100, 100. I used a 50 um, lens and it was 2.8. Okay. All right. Um, and you had to lighten it because 2.0 uh, at 100 was too slow, right? Yeah, yeah. Or too fast, I mean. It, yeah. Yeah. I'm just learning all the language anyway of photography. That's okay. Has, has anyone mentioned bracketing to you? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I want, when you shoot this from now on, I want you to bracket. So that would mean, let's say you've got, you're shooting at F4. I uh -huh. want you to shoot at one at 5.6, one at F4, and one at 2.8. Okay. And that way we're going to get a bright one, a dark one, and one in the middle. Sometimes mama bear works. Sometimes the baby bear works. Okay. Um, but it, that, that's a way for you to get to learn what it looks like and what you get. You start to, it starts to come into your brain and you learn that. Okay. Um, on this one, notice that your LED light is a different color. 
I know, right? I noticed that in looking at this going, oh, I'm going to get marked up for that because it's, uh, yeah, well, I see it. It wouldn't be terrible, but purple doesn't go with bronze at all. I, right, right, yeah. <laughs> that's it. So um, that's something that your LED should have. You should be able to dial it to where. And, and just, you know, just so you know, I rushed. It was this morning. Things weren't, hadn't been working out this week. And so I'm like, I just got to get it. So I, I just rushed it. Okay. With that, well, that's, so, that's with fine. more, more time, um, I, you know, I'll do better because you, I'll have more errors to correct and learn from. Do you use Lightroom or? Or Photoshop. I use Capture One and Affinity Pro. Okay, so Capture One, you're going to go in there, you're going to take a brush, you're going to sample this bronze right here, you're okay. going to take a brush and set this to the same bronze and just brush it in and it'll be just perfect. Okay. No, easy fix, easy fix. Very good. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for joining the class here. Yeah, well, you know, I'll take kudos because I did recommend Marie and Carla you know, so those are, those ladies were really great. <laughs> so, Wonderful. <laughs> Jerry Campion. Hi, Don. Hello Hi, again. Jerry. Good, new, uh, another new name. Well, I was on the last class as well. Oh, okay, good. Hey, Jerry, I really love the lighting on this man with the shadows. I really do. That is, uh, now I'm gonna look for it behind the scenes before I ask. Okay, so you're creating those sh shadows. Nice. Yes, yes. Um, I, I did actually try it with the softbox first, but that shot you're looking at there was actually ambient light and then just a, a, a uh, flashlight there to kind of give those shadows. And I soften them up by putting, a, I can't see it in the picture, but I just held up a, a small scrim in front of the of the speed light. Can yeah, there's um that? there's a food shooter that I work with named Judy. Um and Judy Doherty. D O H E R T Y. Judy Doherty photography if you're interested. Um her her work is just catch caught on fire. I mean she is working a lot. And one of the reasons she works is that she's starting to she's developed these shadows works. Uh, we had her come on and uh, to uh, one of my class, uh, my advanced class, and talk about what she did, and uh, it was really uh, eye-opening because what you think is like, oh, she's doing all this fancy stuff. Nope, just like you, a little flashlight yeah, or a flash. She she has a, a speed light, I can't imagine. and she just puts it. She just moves it around, sets it right yeah. on the set, moves it around at very low power. Yeah, yeah. Because if these shadows go dark really dark nah that's not what we're about what we're about is these little open shadows here so looks like you have a main light and uh, the the flashlight so well, it was actually a, a 0.5 of a second so it i didn't actually use the, the softbox at all afterwards so it's ambient light plus the you can just see in the bottom left okay, hand corner. so the ambient the ambient uh light in the building in the room yeah yeah Yep. Um, and what you can do, Jerry, have you shot tabletop before? Other than the I last have, class? Yeah. yeah, I did, yeah. You have? On the last class, yeah. Okay, but before that at all? No, no. Okay. So one of the things you can do is you could take your flash. Uh, is this another one over here? No, yeah, it's, it, it is, yeah. I didn't use that in that so one. But yeah. You can take your flash and set up your your... Uh, soft light to get a beautifully lit soft light shot without the 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 the, uh, the, the shadows. Okay, and let's say it's f4. So you got an f4 soft lit shadows. All you have to do is find your your speed light at f5 or at f4.5. Uh, you know, a third of a stop over, two thirds of a stop over. And then add your shadows. You know, it's really, really nice. So if you don't have ambient light, use your other strobes to create it, create the ambient. Okay, gotcha. Um, so you, you can shoot well into the night by creating your own ambient. Uh, what lens, sir? 
it's uh, in 1855, uh, I think it was at 35, and that would be a 50 equivalent. Jerry, I really like this shot. Really, really like this shot. Thank you. Yeah, it took a lot of work. <laughs> it was the first time I, I tried the, the sort of flat lay. Anything that's, anything that's worth it took a lot of work. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And now we're back to Daniel and his peppers. Hey there. Yeah. Wow. Side, side light, I guess it looks like. Big side yes. light. Yeah, from the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweeping across. Uh, you've got your camera out on this boom? Yes. Uh -huh. You are a very brave person. <laughs> You ride a motorcycle without a helmet? I mean, this is the kind of non-risk averse person we're talking about here. Um, wow, okay. Uh, obviously not touching the camera, but triggering it from the keyboard? Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, all right. Well, that's a neat piece of wood. I love this. What did you do to the peppers? Did you wax them? Did you wet them? Just a, just a touch of olive oil. Olive oil, okay. Yeah. So Isn't I was trying to get the, uh, the difference between the matte wood background and I wanted a little more pop on the, on the shiny peppers. Yep. I call these, these highlights liquid highlights. You know, they look like they're poured on. I really like it. Then we got this little guy over here. Yeah, I wanted to get the progression left to right from the yellow to the orange to the red to the to the dry dried out, just like the wood, yeah. Nice. Thanks. I love the wood that you chose. I love this um, this sort of almost like a like a container here, right through the middle there. Really, really nice. And you got so many swirlies that this 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 line, whether it's straight or not, doesn't matter because it's just all all over the place. Um, what lens did you use? Uh, I believe it's on the uh, behind the scenes. It's a, I think that was the 50. Okay. Yeah, 50. So when you say double diffuse, you got your inner baffle? Yep. Okay. The outer baffle, yeah. Really nice. Thanks. You're wow, man. Thank you. Great shot. Yeah. Just a great shot. Mr. Curry. Yep. Melvin. Yeah, you told me you were um, having a little creative block of, uh, this morning. Obviously, you got over it in the last two and a half hours. Well, I, uh, I just decided to go for it, and I had an idea, and I said, whatever, you know, whatever I get out of it. I get out of it and that's it. <laughs> Damn. You know, it's like Yeah, well uh, like yeah, we always say if you're if you're in a creative block, shoot. That's the only way to get out of it. Pick up the camera and go and shoot something. You'll get back into it really <clears> fast. Because it's eye hand coordination and your brain and it'll come back. Ah, that's really nice. Wow, what a great idea. So where what is the grid? Do we have behind the scenes? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Actually, the grid was on the table first, and I had the walnuts on the grid, but then it dawned on me that maybe it would be kind of cool to have these spots of light, and I could use the lights on the little uh, circles of light on the table to place my walnuts. <laughs> what, a, what a fantastic photograph. Yeah, man. That that's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, image. Uh, it's uh, conceptually, it's very cool. Here, I was thinking this is some sort of exotic piece of metal that you found with holes cut out of it, and it's a piece of damn masonite. Yeah. Uh, really well I, done. So, uh, these are, are you using strobes? Yeah, just the one on the right. The, the other one on that's close to the ceiling, it was just so, so I could take a picture with my, my phone. It was too dark. Okay. So 
So this is this is your strobe here. No, the one on the right. This one is. With the barn doors to okay. direct the light into the into the frame. Right straight into the to the holes. And then this guy is the, the blue gel one. Right, exactly. Really great idea, man. Really great idea. Beautifully done. That shot's crazy. It's just nuts. Yeah. It is nuts. <laughs> totally nuts. Um, great job. Lens, sir? 105 my, uh, my, uh, macro lens. Super. That's a, that's a great shot. It's got to go to the top of your portfolio. All right. Thanks. All right. Very good. Mark, green peppers on warm wood. I love the little highlight right here. Reflected on the background. We got highlights all through the, the peppers here. Nicely designed, nicely composed. Everything's touching all the marks here, Mark. Very good. Um, and what uh, what lens are you using for this? 50. 50? And it was uh, F11, I believe. Yeah, I, the, the way the, 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 you got the grain of the wood going straight across and the way the the light source is hitting it. So we know it's a top light source of some kind. Okay. All right, very nice. Nice bright center area. I tried the soft box, but it was, I wanted it to be a little bit more poppy where it was mm -hmm. going through the scrim. So I used mm -hmm. a gridded reflector instead. And then I had that gray card or the black card down at the bottom to bring down that highlight at the top part of the frame. Right here. Yeah, the, there's a black card on the table. That Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it really, with that, this this light probably got a pretty bright in here, didn't it? Yeah, I fought with that thing for an hour trying to get the get the highlight not blasting the table, and uh, I finally got it worked out. Did you think about putting this highlight in the center? I tried, and the problem that I was having with it is. Where I'm shooting from above, I don't have a macro lens. I got that 50, and that position of the camera is as close as I could get and okay. still get focus. So trying to get the scrim at enough of an angle without getting in the way of the lens was uh, was an issue. Got it. Yeah, and, and how would you solve that issue? Two words in front of the word lens. Two words. Tilt shift. Oh, yeah. Yep. If you had a shift lens, you could shift it up, move the highlight back down where you want where you want. Yeah. I got some uh I got some of the macro tubes, but it's just the plastic ones. It doesn't have it it was the ten dollar ones from Amazon. Oh, really? Those are fine. Yeah, I couldn't I lost control of everything. I couldn't change the the uh, f-stop on the lens or anything like that. So I'm going to get some of the better ones. All right. Well, very good, man. Thank nice, you. nice shot. Nicely done. Oh, and that's it. All right. Hey, as you can see, it takes longer than an hour. Hey, Don. Can yes. you hear me? My name's Judith Hernandez. I have some images, but um, I couldn't drop them into that folder. So mine are in the comments. In the oh, mine's up, mine are over in the uh, in the pictures. Okay. Um, the way to do the way to do the albums is you've got to open the album and add your image to it. You, if you put it in the in the the feed, you can't oh. attach it to the album. So okay. if if you put it up, you got to put it up twice. Oh, all right. I know so that's fine. Here in Thanks, Don. Don, this is Phyllis Journey, and I have posted a picture too. And uh, I, but I guess I have to learn from what you just said to put it into an album. That's just fine. Do you guys see your pictures here? I see it. Yeah, mine is the tea glass. Oh, yeah, mine's there too. Mine's the uh, little chili peppers with the garlic and garlic press and the mortar. And Don, mine. Oops, sorry, mine's the garlic up at the top. Right here at the garlic, so we got the yeah. garlic. Yeah. Mine, mine is the one with the wood planes. Yeah. Mine's that one that you're pointing to now. Got it. And we got the tea, 
That's mine, Phyllis. Uh -huh. And is that all of them that we no, missed? Mine are oh, the, here, we got the, the wood. woodworking planes out there. Got it. All right. So let's start here at the top and go to the garlic. Ooh, Leo, man, that's nice. Thanks. That's really pretty. This is, you know, we always talk about showing people something you haven't seen before. And very few people get down this close to a garlic. I mean, the garlic is on my screen even. It's five times bigger than a normal garlic. And all this detail in here uh, is really, really pretty. Did you put up a behind the scenes? You did. did. Okay. So. You uh, just and, found my photo. What's that? Oh, sorry. Um, the uh, so we're using a soft box to the side. Uh, I love the, the 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 flag. Absolutely love the flag. Have you done this before? Leo. Uh, I try. Let's put it that way. I've been doing it for a long time, or it seems like a long time to me, but keep practice. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way to get better is to practice. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Really, I love the little tiny fill card you use. The little tiny. Look what it's doing. Everybody, look what it's doing. It's just so delicate in here. This light is being captured from the side, and that little bit of, of pop back there, that's that little white card. And look how this, the inside of the garlic here is lighting up the garlic in front, like stage lights. That's really nice. That'd make a great print. That'd make a really great print. Thanks. And I appreciate you doing this class, Don. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I appreciate you coming along. Um, and you know, if a guy can get a million dollars for a potato, you should be able to get a, you know, <laughs> million and a quarter for garlic, for damn it. Um, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take the quarter. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I wanted to call the guy, the buyer up, and say, "Look, I'll sell you a potato shot for a lousy two hundred grand." I mean, you know, I'm happy to do that. All right, and this one belongs to Judy. Is this the one you were referring to, Judy? Yes. Yes, okay. it is. All right. So we've got. Um, I'm going to go with side light. Is there a behind the scenes? Yes, there is. That's not it. <laughs> is that it? That's it. That's it. Okay. So, okay, we've got the soft, it's like a soft box with a, a covering over it. Yeah. And you're, do, you're double diffusing. Is that what you're doing? Yes. Nice. I kept blowing out the white and the garlic, so. Nice. Nice idea here. Very well. Have you ever shot tabletop before? Just since we've been sheltering in place. Okay. Good. Let's go back to your shot. Oh, it's got a nice feeling of light. I like the, the I like the shadow coming off the garlic here. I love the garlic, and the color, the red coming through is really nice. Um, these these black peppers, they are really a pain to shoot. Yeah. You you chose you chose the painful road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're dried, so they're not shiny. And so they just basically suck up the light, just like this the little bowl back here. Uh, right. Great texture on the bowl. Uh, love the red back here. Let me give you a couple of styling tips. Okay. You will spend more time fixing the damn folds in your cloth than you'll spend on anything else in the shot. The little sharp bends that they get like that, we got to get rid of them. That's why you want little pieces of toilet paper or newspaper or corks are great you know whenever you shoot uh, or get a, a wine bottle that's got corks save up about six or eight corks because you can stick a cork in here and get that perfectly round thing uh, on the on the good side you did pretty well that little kink right there would be a problem for me as art director that one's i'm gonna let that one slide because it's the peak it's pretty good uh this one over here kind of kinks in a little bit uh, and then these down here, there's, there's too many of them. Okay. Uh, it gets too busy there. But yeah, man, working with uh, the cloth and getting those, you know, every curve has got to be smooth and even. It can't be kinked uh, is really nice. You got a light to the right side here somewhere too, right? 
No, I don't. That, that's the fill card. Fill card, yeah. Fill card. So that that then this thing's pretty shiny because it's really picking up that fill card. Right. Yeah, and it's interesting. Look how it reflects the fill card perfectly, and this old stone thing says, "Yeah, not enough for me." <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, you got you kept. Look at you. Re, you retain the shadow detail here. You're killing it. Thank you. Yeah, that's the way to do it right there. All right. I like it. I like it, Judy. Thank you. And thanks um, for great. Next time you do it, yeah. tighten it up. What do you mean? Tighten it up. We got a lot of space between the garlic and the peppers and this oh. thing over here. <laughs> kind of work work it together, okay? okay. Sasha. Yeah, nicely done. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Uh whose is this one? I don't know who this one is. Come back to that one. Come down here to that's me, Phyllis. Phyllis. Mm -hmm. How are you, Phyllis? Fine, thanks. And thank you, Don, for doing this. You're very welcome. Looks like a steaming hot cup of tea. It is. Is the steam in your shot? Or did you put Photoshop steam? No, no, that's real. I was running back and forth to the kitchen. Wow. Because that steam, as everybody knows, if you ever tried to do it, that steam didn't last very long. No. you got to get it right. That is absolutely beautiful. It's a charming photograph. The Thank lace you. in here is, is in everything. Um, are, you, are you Andrea's mom? Yes, ah. I am. Ah. Two talented photographers in the family. Oh, Thank dad. you. Now, you took this last time, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yep. I did. Look at I'm, I'm looking at your look where you put your horizon. Yeah. Look how straight across everything is. I'm sitting here smiling because I'm going, Phyllis listened. Yes, you did. That's really great, Phyllis. That's a beautiful shot. Thank you. That, see that little dark area right there? Yes. Make it match the other part of the of the shine there. Pull it up a little bit. This you've got a little bit of a, a highlight coming across the paper there. Just pull yeah. that up a little bit so it matches. Okay. So we don't see that. It's really nicely done. What was your lens, Phyllis? Uh I was shooting it was F4. I was shooting um an 18 to 55 uh Canon. I really have a, pretty. And the EIS was pretty high on it. I'm very limited to how I can shoot it. You know, you can see that that's a window. So the mm -hmm. light above is falling down on top. And all I have is, is a little card on the left. Mm -hmm. This is, we, we call this dark field lighting. Yeah. And um, is there a card in front anywhere? No. No, it's all natural. I think it's the over the light that came out from the over the top part of the window and fell on it. I was gonna say I'll and you shot at this at F four. Yeah. And your shutter speed was what? Oh. Thirtieth, fifteenth. It could have been. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. I didn't take that. No, That's okay. Because I I'm see see these reflections I'm seeing here. What's happening? Yeah. Because what, what I'm seeing is the front of this is beautifully filled in, right? right. I think that's from the room itself. Uh, the room is light and airy. Right. Yep. Yep. That's what it's from. It, yeah. It's an old glass, so those are, those are scratches that I simply couldn't do anything about. That's all right. I like, it looks like it's a condensation on here. Partially. Yeah. And if you want to get a little bit more, just very slightly. And if you want to get rid of the scratches, try this. I don't know if it'll work on every glass, but a little bit of Vaseline. Oh, you know, okay. Wipe it on the glass, and sometimes the Vaseline hides the scratches. All of a sudden, it becomes pretty clear. Um, okay. But it's a. It, when I say a thin layer, I mean a really thin layer. You don't want to. Uh, yeah. And then if it doesn't hide the scratches, hit a spritzer bottle with it, and you've got water. Um, okay. condensation will look like a hot glass of tea. Nicely done. Thank you. I'm excited. All right, so we got the wood shavings here. All right, Lauren. 
We got side lighting. Yeah, we do. Yes. Yep, it's a uh, strobe coming down about 45 degrees through a scrim. Uh, everything is surrounded by black cards. And you've got, it looks like you've got a little uh, black card right there. Yep. Um, is that, what is that doing? Is that doing this? That's doing that. Okay. All right. All right. I didn't want cool. this to be real bright uh, since these are very old. Uh, and then a little bit of uh, Vibeza to uh, help bring out some of the shadows. Okay. Shot uh, f6.3 at 180th on a 50 mil prime. And what was the the um, aperture? Uh, 6.3. 6.3. Now, why did you settle on 6.3? Was there a reason, or that's the that was was giving me the look I was looking for? Okay. All right. Yeah. Look, it it's it's clean. It's got a little of a warm feel to it. Yes. Is, is that the metal? Is the metal? That's itself? the metal. That's More the like, that's the like that's a, the true color of the metal. Like a gun metal. Yep. Got a little bit of blue in the metal here. Yes, it does. No, oh, those are cool, man. You could do a whole portfolio, and I'm serious, Lauren. You could do a whole portfolio of those things. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. You've got close-ups galore through here. You got the old wood here. You got. That right there would be an incredible thing. You got it from the side. You got it from the top. You got it from the front. You could shoot probably 25 pictures of these things and just have a whole portfolio of these uh, old-fashioned hand tools that nobody works with anymore. I don't say nobody, but, you know, people who build houses don't use these anymore. No, they don't use those. <laughs> no, no, My no. Dad, no. I those belong to my dad. My dad was a cabinet maker. Yeah, I was going to say there's there's some cabinet makers uh, I know here in Phoenix. Uh, a ca actually, a couple of young ones who actually use the old tools and make the cabinets. But I yep. can't afford those cabinets. I mean, they're just the most beautiful things you've ever seen. But they, when you say handmade, they're handmade. Yeah, man, you got a you got a whole portfolio of stuff here. Sweet. Keep, keep the ideas rolling around in your head. Keep them rolling around. Um, it looks like, oh, I got marks on here. It looks like we've got everybody in in the, um, that put their stuff in the folder, but I'm missing this person. Let's see who this is. Lori, Lori Duthout. Uh, Lori, lovely photograph. Wow. Beautiful. And I know I'm supposed to be looking at Lori's because she's got a behind the scenes shot. Yep. The light's way over here. So that's, that's lovely. The use of the black card at the top, Lori, um, to just bring this down, just makes all of this stand up. This is a great shot, Lori, beautiful shot. Nicely done. Beautiful. Love that. Uh, we got our, we've seen these guys. We've seen these guys. Haven't seen this one yet. Jay Myers. Okay, Jay Myers. Do we have a behind the scenes? Yes. All right. Okay, window light. Um, I, I would tell you that your window light is coming forward. See where the shadows are falling here? They're falling that way. And when we have something like, I love the idea you, you stuck the uh, tin foil in, that's really amazing. Uh, I see what it's doing to this side of these dice. But when we have something like white cards and dice, we need to create a little bit of drama. I would have turned your table this way to the side and shot from here and let your window light come from the back throwing the shadows forward, which give us uh, more of a, a feeling of uh, dimension to it. They're going to the side. Uh, all in all, it's not a bad shot this way at all. You still have, we still have nice directions to it. 
we can feel the light in here. We've got a nice feeling of the wood here. That's lovely. Your depth of field coming right through here. Sweet. Um, we don't need to see these cards in focus up here. As a matter of fact, I would say you probably could get away with cropping this just like that, leaving off that top edge, coming down here, coming around here, and clipping off just a little bit of the king there. And remember, if you crop one thing, you've got to crop another thing. You can't just crop one thing. It looks like you, you screwed up. So we crop in over here a little bit. We take out this at the top. And then our eye gets drawn right back to the die. <coughs> Nicely done. Good work. I love the effort you guys put into this. This is this is really uh, this is really full of, of hard work and effort. We've got one more here. I, I want to say that um, Daniel's picture that he put in there of the sword. I know we reviewed the other one, but I like that one too. That one yeah. looks really sharp. Yeah, I thought it turned out really good, Daniel. I think it's a good shot. Oh, thank yeah, you. I'll, I'll thank make you here. That, that was my second one. Oh, okay. Okay. I uh, had, had the nectarines earlier that you took a look at. Got it. Um, I, would, I would soften this edge back here, um, Ron. And, mm -hmm. and get that dark edge. This is coming from a flag, right? Well, it, it's it's the curvature of the background. That was like a rubber mat, and it, and it um, pull it up tighter and get that curvature to come through here. Let more of I the see. onion and the garlic go up against that black. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, let it be more dramatic. Yes, I see that. I see that. Yeah. All right. Very okay, cool. Thanks. You're welcome. Next week we have we have next week. It's called. The Circle of Beauty, the Arc of Beauty. We talk about backlight, side light, and top backlight, which is still side light. Um, a lot of, uh, of these things in it. And please let be known that I'm doing a new video for this class tomorrow. So it'll be up tomorrow on Sunday, a new video just for this class. So we can talk about the Arc of Beauty a little more. So um, don't start it yet. Don't start it. Start collecting your thoughts and ideas, and I'll have the video up tomorrow uh, morning. So everyone, have a fantastic day. What a great class. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, last time we started with uh, this many people, and we ended with half as many people. Stick with it. Stick with it. Make all eight shots. You'll, uh, you'll love uh, the work that you do. Uh, see you next time, folks. Take care. Thanks, Don. We'll talk to you later. Have a good week, everyone. And Don, thanks, thanks again bye -bye. for the class. You're very welcome. Thanks. See you then. Bye.